Welcome to the tour of on Unity 2023. So in the last video, we started to think about scenes. These are sections of a game within Unity. We have different scenes, and those scenes contain game objects. So just as a quick reminder, when we talk about game objects, we're talking about their different parts of a game. There might be things like cameras or characters or sprites. And these all have components. Components connect game objects to particular systems within Unity. Instead of everything in the game getting information about everything happening all the time, we can use components to subscribe to particular systems and also send or get information from them. So we have game objects, game objects within scenes, the game objects themselves have components, those components happen to exist in systems. This allows us to write things fairly quickly within Unity and develop games fairly quickly by only using information we need instead of dealing with things we may not necessarily need. So we saw that when we create different scenes, we can subdivide our game. These are different sections of our game. So in a previous video, we created a new scene called Menu. And then when we loaded that scene, it populated the hierarchy view. So over here, we have a hierarchy view, and we're currently looking at Menu, which is the scene that's currently open in its corresponding game objects. So in the last video, we created a text UI game object. This created a canvas UI game object for the text to be in. And then we created a button that's in within the canvas. And that's what we see right here. We have one text called main menu and one button right here, which is showing us, if we switch over to the game view, the start button right here. So in this video, we want to continue to build on this idea. So we saw in a previous video that we can create an empty game object, give it a scripting component, which allows us to write C-sharp programming code and work with just a particular scene. We've only got a handful of game objects. We're going to have some buttons, and we're going to have some text, and then we don't have anything else, so we don't necessarily need to associate a scripting component per game object. We just have one scripting component for the entire scene, and that's what we have right now. So our main menu code started as an empty game object. It has a single scripting component called main menu, which is what we're looking at right here. And it contains, at least currently, a single method called start game, which I'll pull up right here. So start game is void, which means it doesn't return any data. And it's public, which means it, we can access it both within this file in this class and within Unity itself. And all it has is a single instruction right here to load the scene sample scene which is the default scene that Unity gives us. So when we run the scene, we have main menu text, we have a single button, when we click on that button, it loads the sample scene and sends us over to the other scene, which is exactly what we want from main menu. So generally main menus also have another button, one to start the game and one to end the game. So let's talk about kind of both of those buttons connected to each other. So we previously saw, if I click on cam, or click on button right here, that buttons have something called on click, which allows us to run particular methods that are in other C sharp files. So we saw that we wrote some C sharp code that was a scripting component. The scripting component was part of main menu code. So right here we said runtime only, because we only want this when the game's running. And then we dragged and dropped main menu code, and then we selected from here down main menu, so the scripting component, and start game, which is the method we created. So that's it for start game. We click on the button, it calls that method, that method loads the scene, moves us to the next scene. So let's do something a little bit different. I'm going to go ahead and click on canvas up here, and I'm going to create another button. And this is going to be the quit game button. So we have one that starts the game and one that quits the game. So down to UI, and then down to button right here. And for this, I'm going to do something pretty similarly. Drag it right here. Let's make it a little bigger. Uh, let me double check what sizes I did. I did uh, 226 and 94. So let's make this one roughly the same size. So kind of, well, 226 and roughly, what do we say? Oh, there it goes. 229, pretty close and right here. And we could input exact numbers and make these exactly the same, but I'm not gonna to worry too much about it. So we have a button up here. I'll just make this a little bigger, why not? 
and we have a button right underneath it, and we could spend some time kind of arranging everything exactly to the grid that we wanted. So if I click on this button, we could kind of arrange it maybe slightly above, click on this button over here, maybe arrange it slightly under, and we could spend a lot of time kind of arranging everything. But the purpose is not necessarily arranging things so much as creating a main menu and talking about it functionality. So right here, start, and we have something that says button. Now, we talked about in a previous video how the hierarchy view shows the hierarchy. It shows the relationship between ga different game objects because game objects can exist in a parent-child relationship. We can have a parent that has a child that has a child that has a child that has a child, has a child onwards and onwards for however deep we want to go. So we saw that when we created at least one user interface game object, it created a canvas game object. And then when we added a button, the button came with its own child called text. So in order to change the text of this, we need to go find the corresponding button right here, come down to text, and then we want to change this to quit. Okay, so we have a start button and we have a quit button. So similarly to how we created the functionality for start, we need to create the functionality for quitting. So to do that, we're going to need something to put right here. But before we can do that, we need to go write the code. So we're going to write a method here in just a moment, and then we're going to come back here and add an onClick uh, entry, and that's going to allow us that when we click on quit to close the game. So let's come back over here where we've got this pulled up. Well, let's follow the pattern we already have. This needs to be public because we want to access it both in this file and within Unity. It needs to be void because we don't returning any data. And let's just simply call this quit game. Open and close parentheses, open and close curly brackets or curly braces. So there we go and put it right here. Now, unfortunately, how we quit game is requires knowing what class and method it's under, kind of similar to scene manager. And part of this is kind of learning the ins and outs of what Unity calls things. So how it ends things is it ends things as part of a class called application and the method is called quit. So application, and there it is for me, it's guessed that's what I want and that's exactly what I want. So I put the cursor over it, we see quits the player application, which is what we want to happen. So for our start game, we load the new, we load scene sample scene that sends us from the main menu into the game itself. And for quit game, we have simply application quit, which will quit the application. So let's go ahead and file save. So pretty similarly to what we did last time, we will wait for Unity to reload. There it goes. I accidentally minimized it. Wait for Unity to reload. We will go to the button we want to work on. I've got it currently selected for quit. We're going to come down here to on click. We're going to click plus. Yes, we want this runtime only, and then we're going to click and drag this object over here, game object, and drop it down right there, and then select, oh, well, we want this scripting component called main menu, and then we need to select the name. So lots of things going on, but we're interested in quit game right there. So now we've set up an on click, so when we click on the quit button, we will quit the game, application quit. Alternatively, if we click on start, we will start the game and move to another scene. So let's go ahead and run this. And if click on start, sends us the sample scene, that's exactly what we want. Stop, replay, we click on quit, it will end the game. Oh, which is to say it's not currently running, so we don't see anything going on. So when we run it in the editor, it's not going to application quit because the application isn't currently running. So it's a, that's a little bit confusing, but if we were to build it and quit it, it would then quit. So we've set this up the way we want. We can application quit from this and we can application start or what's known as loading a scene to move to another scene that's another section of the game. So right now we have a main menu of sorts. We can start the game and we can quit the game. As we get more, or as we build more complexity into this project, we also might want to change things like settings, volume settings, visual settings, all kinds of things we might potentially want to change, and then we could potentially build that in as well. But at least for right now, we have the starts of a pretty good main menu. We can start a game by loading a scene, and we can quit a game, application quit. Of course, it doesn't quite work in the editor, uh, because it, the editor's working within its own separate thing. But we have those two options right now. So at least in this video, we're making our way through a main menu. We have start and we have quit. Now, 
We'll talk about in a future video how we create a pause menu, which will be very similar to this, such that we can then pause a running game, potentially go back to the main menu, loading, loading a scene and back into that, or potentially exiting out of that as well. But that'll be slightly more complicated, and we'll kind of talk about that when we get there. At least for this video, though, we have a main menu. We can load a scene and we can quit out of this. Now, something to think about as we're building parts of a game as kind of different scenes, different sections of our game. At least right now, we're looking at menu. If we attempt to go back, though, to sample scene, it's like, hey, you made some changes. Do you want to save them? And I do. So let's go ahead and save them. And we'll move back over here. And if we start from here, we will start playing from this particular scene, which is what we want. So as we're, make, as we're making and dealing with these particular sections, we're starting that scene when we play in the editor. We'll talk about in a future video how we build these in sequence. We want to actually, when we make something for other people to play, start with the main menu. But at least right now, every time we load the scene, we're playing from that particular scene. So we can load the main menu, play around the main menu, make sure everything works correctly. Then we can load right now sample scene, work in that, and then we'll kind of talk about future scenes as we add them. But again, at least for this video, we're interested in making a main menu, which we've now done. We can start and we can quit. And we can also move between these menus as we build in. And in a future video, revisit what a pause menu looks like. It looks very similar to a main menu, but slightly different functionality internally to then navigate between all of these different scenes as we continue to build on our knowledge as part of Unity 2023. Thanks for watching.